my Monet Cafe family. I am so excited to be here on my own property after so much that we've been through. And I've got my French easel here just set up on our land. And what a perfect place. The weather's good to do a little plein air painting. It's a French word that just means on location. I haven't gotten to do a lot of that because of life. And I know a lot of you guys relate to that. Things get in the way, like family, which is worth it. Uh, illnesses, uh, work, so many things that I know you guys understand. I think that's what makes our channel and Facebook groups so special is because we're real. We talk about the real things of life and we relate to each other like that. So I'm going to go over a little bit about um, how to set up to do a painting like this. Plein air painting is a lot of work, but once you get um, your system down, it becomes easier. The first few times is really hard and I need to do a lot more of it myself. I've got a real advantage here now because my property is really so beautiful. Thank you Lord. Praise God. And um, so I'm going to get started and I'm going to go through some of the things that I have here that might help you to learn about plein air painting. All right, let's go Jackson. One more time. Now let me just explain a little bit about my setup and uh, why I have certain things the way I do. This is a French easel. There are all kinds of different methods. This is actually not the best easel um, to do painting on location. It takes a little bit more to set up. It's just the one I have. There are better ways to do it, um, just quicker, easier setup ways to do it. But uh, one day I want to show just how to how to actually um, put up a French easel because I know we got a lot of beginners on here and it's a little trick to actually put it together. Hey Jackson! So, um, but I'm not going to do that in this video. So here it is and I've actually got my little appetizer tray. Some of you guys are familiar with that from uh, other videos that I've done where I actually discovered that it makes an awesome and affordable way to have your pastels, to have a palette of your pastels. It's because it emulates the color wheel, and that's just so beneficial um, to creating good art. Now, having some water is important with you. Having things like I had on a hat when you saw me. Um, it's not that sunny where I am now, but you never know. And sometimes there's bugs, there's wind, there's all kinds of issues that if you've done any of that kind of painting, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, I've got my um, little setup. You want to be as prepared as possible, too. I have um, my little setup here where I have a board already. Pardon this board that looks um, sort of like um, Frankenstein with all of the tape around it. I had some of my um, pastel papers that I had left over from the flood that are a little bit warped from so much humidity, so I'm having to tape them down a lot. But um, this is a piece of Color Fix uh, pastel paper, and uh, this was a packet that came in all these different colors. Now, I noticed something interesting that some of you who've used this product may notice is that some of the colors have more of a sanded surface than others. For example, this um, creamy, yellowy one has more grit to it than the uh, the blue in this packet, and then the the white. I think this one, the soft umber, had uh, a little bit more grit to it, maybe the black. But I don't know. That, that's interesting. I don't know if it was just my packet or whatever it was. Um, another thing is having some sort of uh, things to wipe your hands off with. I also have a wet rag that I don't have in this picture. Um, and this is actually a quick little way. If you have any mats or anything with you, sometimes the painting on location can be intimidating. I mean, like, that is a, a lot of view there and it's like okay what do I paint and you can try to um, kind of crop it in in your mind but often that's kind of hard so I find a little mat is a great way to crop you can kind of get an idea of and all you do to make it bigger or smaller is just zoom it in or out to your eye to your focus okay you can do it vertically and uh, I'm gonna wait to paint just a bit because um, the Sun's gonna go down a little bit and we get the most awesome um, not sunsets, but just when the light is not quite so bright as this. But uh, I'm not going to start too late because l light is fleeting. <laughs> and another good idea is to often um, take a picture of what you're going to paint before. Like right now, I, with my camera here, I should just go ahead and take a picture so I can see it. Maybe take a few of them if, I, if I'm not so into painting to capture the different light because it really changes quickly. Alright, so that's just a little bit about um, plein air painting and how to get started. There's so much more to it, but uh, let's get started painting and I'm so excited.
I thought this might be a good time to show a little bit about the French easel. Like I said, one day I'm going to do a video where I really show how to um, put it together or take it apart and set it up. But um, if you're standing to paint like I am, this is really low right now. I mean, I'm doing it horizontally and I don't want to squat down. I do have a stool here to sit if I get tired, but it's a high stool where it's almost like I'm standing. So French easels have these knob on this side, knob on this side. You get to where you just know how these work. You screw one one way, one the other way. And you can just raise it up to whatever's comfortable for you, and uh, then you're good to go. Now, this is a little zoomed back for my preferences when I paint, but I thought I might uh, keep it zoomed back so I can kind of show you, if my shoulder doesn't get in the way, my idea for cropping this out. Now, what I have here is just a little tray. You, you saw I have my pastels on the other side, but within my pastel palette, I have a few little uh, harder new pastels that are good for sketching and I usually like to sketch them in a little bit darker um, but this is just a paper towel in a little uh, Tupperware container that's from a uh, Chinese restaurant we like <laughs> so you can repurpose a lot of things as an artist so I'm just putting my this is my little pastel holder right now while I work all right so and I have a nice little drawer in the French easel you probably can't see in this uh, picture but or this view but I'm gonna just grab this little one here. I think I'm going to do it horizontally and uh, I may need to readjust my easel. Let me do that real quick. Okay, yes, I think that's a little better. So what I'm doing now is I'm just holding this up. I'm getting a view of what I want to paint here. I really like the shadows. I like this one big tree is going to be more of the right side. I want to keep my um, horizon line not quite in the middle, so I think I'm going to go um, up with this. You'll see. I'll share a little uh, picture, hopefully, of this. So all this is, is getting in shapes. Now, I apologize you couldn't see much of that because I had it zoomed back so far. and I just kind of started painting and wasn't thinking about filming. That's the hard thing about doing all this by yourself. <laughs> but um, I got a general idea. I like these long shadows. I like this, um, while the horizon line is more straight, I like the shadows um, going down, which kind of helped me with not having the horizon line right in the middle. I am going to kind of have it there, but I think the shadows um, will draw the eye down here. So that's the hope anyway. I'm going to take a piece of this pipe foam insulation, and I'm just going to kind of scrub in this, especially the back background trees because they're lighter anyway these are I, I press real lightly with these in the background because they're going to be um, the lightest in value things get lighter as they recede in the distance lighter in value that means lightness or darkness so this is kind of um, still a little bit darker under here then uh, right here under these this is going to be the darkest dark even though I'm not going to see it right here I'm going to establish some more dark soon but um, once again, this is all just to get an idea. You're just kind of sketching um, with putting down some values. That's really all this is. There's another tree on this side. It's actually, I'm going to make it cooler because the sun, that's another thing you want to establish. Where's the light? The light's coming here. Um, even though the sun's setting over here, there's some trees and things blocking it. So I'm getting most of my light on this right side. So I'm going to keep that in mind. So things not in the sun are going to be cooler in color temperature. The brightest thing right now in this painting is the sky and these bright green grasses right here. And you can, once you start painting, the more you paint, the more you learn to interpret the painting. As long as you're following the basic rules, okay? So we've got a general idea here and then we can get started. Now I'm going to go ahead, even though I'm still waiting for the sun to settle a little bit, things are at least somewhat established with my composition, but I am going to go ahead and get in some of these darks um, before um, I have to be on crunch time, I guess I could call it. This is actually really dark. This is not, I thought it was a new pastel, it's a different pastel, I'm not sure which one, I've ground it down to nothing, but notice how the color just came off so easily there. Um, I like using new pastels. This one's better. Or is that my original one? Let me see. 
no, this is a little darker. Um, I like using new pastels um, for the underpainting because they don't take up as much tooth. And this color fixed paper doesn't allow you the layering that um, um, the UART paper and some other papers do. I'm going to keep this a little bit light. I'm just going to get in here and get where these darks are. Usually down in towards the trunk of the tree and um, where the roots are or where underneath the tree is, is where it's going to be darkest. All right, let me just paint a little bit here. I've got a pretty limited palette right here to start with. I know I've got some really dark shadows in those grasses, so these are going to be my darks, and they're a little cooler because they're shadows. And um, then I've got those brilliant greens that where the light is hitting them, so that's going to be represented more right here. This is just a good um, darker, um, earthy kind of a green. Um, I am I see in a lot of this um, the light that's shining a lot of warmth, so that's why I have some of these warm. Um, I love how Karen Margulis calls them like the dirt colors. They're always good to use. But I've got, you know, there's just this pretty warm light. So that's why I have some of these colors. I've got some of these back here um, that are more the, the cooler trees in the distance. Again, things get uh, not as intense in value. They get lighter in value. And they get cooler in color in the distance. So I might even have to lighten them up a little bit more than that. So that's just how I'm starting. And uh, those are my original little new pastels I started with. So, uh... Let's get started, and I might add some more. I'm going to try to keep this real basic because I don't know how much time I have, and the light's already changing. Oh my gosh, look at that. But you see that warm um, area in the grass there? I better get going. <laughs> oh, I just love it. I'm hearing cows and all kinds of things out here. It's wonderful. All right, I know that um, this sky, it's uh, gradually getting darker as, um, as the light is fading right now. So I'm just going to get a little bit of the sky in here. I'm not going to worry about carving that in too much. And then the sky typically gets lighter at the uh, horizon line. So I'm going to kind of sneak some of that in here. But because this um, um, light is getting warmer with the setting of the sun, I'm going to add a little yellow in here. I wish I had more things to I usually clean my pastels. I, I can probably clean them right here on a piece of paper that I keep behind it. This is a really soft pastel. That might be a little be a little too dark in value um, and sometimes when you add certain yellows to the blues they can blend to look a little green I know you don't um, blend pastels a whole lot but um, that just added a little warmth I'm gonna leave it at that keep this simple all right now let's get to I see this beautiful light on top of this tree right now it's not quite that light let's see it's the light is shining over here and it does have some warmth on it. I've got my darks in there, but um, I don't have them too dark because this is kind of, when it's distant, it's just kind of subtle. Then I've got some cool greens. I like kind of how I'm having to work real fast here because these things are in the shadow. It's darker on this side, so I'm going to add this darker. And I'll fix this a little bit more. You can even um, work on these more after you're out of... Um, the field, I should say. <laughs> and I've got, man, there's some beautiful distant trees back here, but they even have that warmth just uh, casting its light, which is awesome. And I am so glad I put in this general composition because I wouldn't know what to paint if I hadn't had that to look at. A little cooler here, but again, I'm going to get some of that... Um, that warmth even though they're far away they do have some warm light being cast on them there's noises all around back here and some of it is um is these uh coyotes that live back here that's why i'm having to really watch my my kitties and my, my little jackson because jackson he would try to fight them i know him <laughs> i don't want to put too much of this back here because I want um, those to still recede and I don't want to put too many warm colors back there. But I do have this beautiful, uh, it's almost an orange back here, um, light that's being cast from behind here. As 
another tree in there. Just um, kind of dancing up and around here, and uh, especially on that side of the tree. Oh, that's really nice. And I see, sometimes I just, when I have a color, I like to go ahead and use it wherever I see it. Not right by the trees over here. And this is already cooling off a lot. I want to, I remember that this was warmer before, but already those shadows are changing. Look how quick that happens. I'm going to keep some of this just from memory um, because I remember that this was all really light in here coming down. And this was darker, so let's get that in. We know, of course, it is grass, so we do have some green in here. And this was the shadows. Now it's incredibly shadowed. It is amazing how quickly light changes. You know, God is the master artist. He really is. All right, I like some of the stuff I've got going on in here. Hey, Jackson. I see you back there. This was that tree that had that, oh, it's not that light, that um, cooler blue that I need, or cooler green, I should say. Yeah, that's more it. I think it probably, it does need to be even darker than that. Let me uh, grab another dark green. Nope, that's about the same. I know this is a real softy, but it is definitely darker. I'm getting some of this really pretty orangey colors in the branches here. Them melding together here.
Who's cooks for you? orange. <laughs> no, no, no. Cool it off a bit.
those coyotes? You hear them, buddy? You hear those coyotes, Jackson? You hear them?
All right, now this is the part where I know I'm running out of layers. <laughs> um, again, this color fixed paper doesn't have the ability to layer as much. But it's the time when I, you guys know my expression, punching up color. I don't know if that's a correct artistic term, but it's when I say, okay, this is going to be my final little um, exciting time to uh, make this kind of fun and, and not exactly what you see. Already I'm doing that right now. I've got this neat little uh, uh, magenta pink that uh, is just so beautiful. And I want to keep it where there's going to be more warmth, which is going to be in the foreground. Maybe just a tad in those trees, not too much because they're a little darker in value. But I might just add a couple little marks here and there. Yeah, I like that. And I'm also seeing, let me get rid of this. What's that? Uh, you know, I haven't even added any purple in this. Can you believe that? And for once, I think I might not even add any purple. But... I'm seeing in here there's a, a blue that is a rich blue if I have it. I might not have it here. Let me look. Is this it? This might be it. Let me kind of put a mark down and see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little in these shadows down here. It's going to add a little oomph. And you want to... Um, Use it somewhere else in the painting if you, you don't want to just have it in one spot. So you just kind of start to feel your way. I'm, I think I'm overdoing it now. I better quit. I may not even should have added that blue. But that was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, I hope I get to do a lot more of this because this is an awesome way to get outdoors. And even if you don't create anything that um, you think is fantastic or you love it, um, you got outside. You had some time in nature and, um, and hopefully, you know, praising our creator, the one who gave us all this gorgeous um, palette to paint from. <laughs> what would we do without this amazing creation? So anyway, all right, I'm going to finish this up and I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did and happy painting.